Hey guys, and welcome back to DIY Technical Design. We're in section eight now, we're almost done. Um, in this section, we are going to be talking about how to review your very first sample that comes back from the factory, how to write review comments, and how to measure your garment. When your sample first comes back from the factory, there's three main points that we're going to be focusing on to review the sample, write our comments, evaluate the sample and send all of that information back to the factory for either the next sample or to approve the design. The three main principles that we'll be looking at are design, fit and function, and construction. We want to make sure that our design intent has been carried through to the physical sample. So just evaluate overall if the factory has completed your design in the way that you intended it to come out. When we evaluate the fit and function, we are going to be measuring our sample, comparing it against what we requested from the factory, and then using that information to tell the factory what measurements to change and how to change the pattern overall. Making these changes should create a better fit for the garment and should help it to reflect the size chart that you've created for your brand. When we evaluate construction, we want to make sure that the factory has followed our directions that are in our tech pack under our technical sketches in our construction callouts page. You want to make sure that the factory has followed what's on your construction and callouts page, or if they've followed a different type of construction from what you asked for, you can either adopt that construction if you like it, or you can ask them to change it back to your original request. Overall, you want to evaluate the sample and just make sure that it's fitting into what you had envisioned in your head. And if the factory has made some changes to it, if you like those changes and want to adopt them, or if you want to change them back to what you had originally requested. Furthermore, you just want to make sure that your tech pack is reflecting either the changes you're making or the things that you're adopting. You can evaluate your garment following five easy steps. Step number one is to measure your garment. You're going to need your tech pack, your prototype, and a few measuring devices like a tape measure. You're going to lay your garment flat on the table, smoothing out any wrinkles without stretching the fabric, and then you'll use your how to measure guide and your POM list to measure your garment against the specs that are in your tech pack. Make sure to be consistently measuring your garments in the same way. That's why it's so important to have a how to measure guide. Your how to measure guide is so important because you wanna make sure that both you and your factory are measuring the garment in consistent ways. You can check out how I created my very own how to measure guide and see how to create your own in the previous sections. I'll have that section linked below. Alrighty, so I've got my sample. I've got measuring tools. I have my tech pack, my construction page, and my um, proto review page, and then I also have my how to measure guide so that I can reference that while I'm measuring. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take your garment and just kind of, I like to grab it by the bottom hem and just shake it a little and just gently lay it on the table. And then just kind of smooth out the wrinkles. You just want to be careful that you don't stretch the garment at all. And you're just kind of like patting out the bubbles so that it's laying flat. And so I can already start to see if there's any pattern issues or anything like this won't lay flat like this side. And so I already know that there may be an issue there. This is just an old t-shirt that I have that's been stained and stuff um, that I don't use anymore. So it's definitely been through some washes and things like that. So that's probably part of what you're seeing. Normally you'd be taking this garment out of a brand new package um, and uh, evaluating it from there. So I'm just going to show you a few of the measurements. So you want to always start at the high point shoulder and following, of course, your um, how to measure guide and your personal POMs and measuring um, to the standards that you've created for your brand. 
and lining it up at that high point shoulder point and then measuring down to where your next point is and for me that is down here at um, the bottom hem and so that's why having another ruler is a great tool you can use it to just kind of make straight lines across your garment and to um, your other measurement piece. And what you're gonna do is just write down those measurements as you measure them. And you're gonna go through the whole garment and do the same thing. Same thing with um, measuring the width. Having a second measure measurement device can be a great way to, you know, like let's say it's six inches down to do my cross chest and that way I can kind of line it up and know that I'm measuring straight um, because measuring crooked isn't going to give you the result that you want and it can also really vary where your um, where your measurements are ending up so if I measure this way it's 19 if I measure this way it's 19 and 3 8 um, so it can make a really big difference. And so what you're going to want to do is just go through the entire how to measure guide, um, the points that relate directly to your garment, and you're going to want to measure all of your specs. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our next page, which is our construction page, and just evaluate the different stitches. So. I can see that, you know, they did bind the top neck. That looks great. It is a chain stitch. I can see from the underhand side. And same thing with um, the armhole and um, bottom hem. However, maybe I asked for a quarter inch um, needle width and they gave me an eighth, it looks like. So I would mark that down. Same thing with all of your measurements. You're going to mark anything that's out of tolerance. You have all of your tolerances in the tolerance column and just comparing that and just marking down where you're seeing like I might write down um, that I saw kind of a weird thing happening here. Put a little question mark and that way I can reference it later in my comments. In step two, you're going to be evaluating the construction of the garment. As you have your garment laid flat, you can check out the different types of stitching that the factory used, any sort of construction that they used to create your garment or accessory, and compare it against what you requested in your tech pack. Highlight any differences you see between your tech pack and the sample. If you want to adopt some of those construction differences, you're more than welcome to if you like how it's constructed. Just be sure to update the sketch to reflect the new construction. Highlight any other differences you see, and you can call that out in your comments later. You can get a better idea of what should be included in your construction page and what you should be looking for in my construction and call out section of this series. I'll have that linked below. Step three is for evaluating the fit. You're going to take your garment and fit it on a form. If you're wondering what size form or um, anything like that, you can check out the um, size chart and grade section of this series and it goes into a little bit more detail about how to find a form specifically for your brand um, and how to develop a size chart. When you're fitting your garment you want to make sure that it's lining up with those standards that you've set with your size chart. You also want to make sure that the fit is consistent with what you had intended for the design. If you wanted it to have a little bit looser fit make sure that when it's fitted on your sized form that is following kind of that design intent that you had for the garment. Make note of any fit changes that you wanna make if you see any drag lines or anything like that. Make note of that in your tech pack when you're evaluating the sample on the form. We'll be referencing those comments later in our comments section that we'll be sending to the factory. After you've fitted your garment and determined where the fit issues are, be sure to take some photos straight on of the front, back, and side of your garment on the form. You'll include these photos when you send the tech pack to the factory and you can reference any of the fit issues um, on the photos. I won't be getting into a ton of detail about fit and fit issues, how to create a great fit, um, because that's a whole series in and of itself. And spoiler alert, that is going to be my next series. I'm going to be going into pattern making, fitting, fit issues, um, grading, 
and kind of talking about all of those different elements in my next series, which will launch at the beginning of 2020. Okay, so now we have all of the information that we need to start writing our comments. Step four is to write your comments. In your comments, you'll want to follow a um, consistent structure whenever you're sending comments to the factory so they know where to look in your comments to find the information that they need. I've set up a really great structure that I recommend to follow in my blog post, which is linked below. In my blog post, I've included some examples of how I call out each section. The sections that I like to include in my comments are a header section, an instruction section, um, a section for the design, the measurement, and the construction. Um, and I also do include a pattern section um, if you are, are making any changes to the pattern, and then also a next step section to give them a clear call to action for what I want next, if I want a, an additional proto or if I want to move on to the next part of the sampling process. So now that we have our comments all written up um, with all the information in there from the beginning steps, now we can send our tech pack to the factory. Just double check that you don't have any of your information duplicated, um, that you've included everything that you need in your comments. It's always best to double check. And just to go over the garment one more time, usually I like to take just sort of like a last look um, and just double check that I have included everything that I need in the tech pack. When I was first starting out in tech design, I even had a checklist next to my desk just to make sure that I wasn't forgetting anything. Always remember that you need to include the photos you took of your garment on the form as well. You're going to go through a few samples in the sample or prototype process. The first sample that you're going to get is going to be your first prototype and that's going to come from that very first tech pack that you send out to the factory. Once you get your prototype back, which is what we just talked about was reviewing the garment, then you'll send that tech pack back for um, the factory to make any changes. If you didn't want any changes, then you can go straight on to the next step. And you'll continue the same process over and over and over again until you've come to an agreement on the final garment and what it's going to look like. Once you have that final garment, everything looks great. You're gonna finalize your tech pack. When I finalize the tech pack, that's when I put the final measurements into the graded size spec. The reason that I do this is because I want to keep the final grade separate from the prototypes that we're creating. I don't want the factory looking at all of my graded sizes. I want them just looking at my base size sample that we're going to be using for the prototypes. Once your tech pack is finalized and you have your final specs into your graded size spec, then you can request a size set. In some cases, you may want to just request a jump size set, which is one of every other size, depending on how big your size range is. Um, for a beginner, I would definitely recommend that you just request a size set so that you can look at all of the sizes within your size range. When you get your size set in, it will be um, one sample of every single size in your size range. And you'll just want to make sure that um, the grade is consistent, that everything is looking good among all sizes, especially if you're um, at the higher and lower ends of your grade. Um, you'll just want to make sure that there aren't any weird things happening with the pattern um, or any small grade changes that you need to make. Your samples from your prototyping are made in a special room in the factory called the sample room. Because of this, you'll want to request a PP and a TOP. A PP is a pre-production sample, and that will be the first sample that comes off the production line before production has begun. The PP is a tested sample so that you know that the production line has been set up correctly and so that you know that there aren't any mistakes being made in the production line, especially since each seamstress is doing a different action, then you can pinpoint if there's any issues um, within the production line. Once you've approved the PP sample, then you'll request a TOP. The TOP will be one of the samples from the first line of production, and it stands for top of production. This is just a double check to make sure that there aren't any issues coming up now that the full production line has gone into effect. 
These last few samples probably won't have any changes, um, only in some specific cases will you have an issue that's come up, but they should be a really fast um, review of the sample and just making sure that there's no issues within the production line and that you're all set to go. Once all of your samples in the sample process have been approved, then you're ready for production. Once production has begun, it's very difficult to make any changes, so that's why it's really important to be super specific and double check everything before your samples go into production. And any changes that need to be made after that point are going to be incredibly costly, so I just encourage you to double check, triple check, whatever you need to do to just make sure that um, everything is right and ready to go. And if you do make a mistake, know that it's not the end of the world um, and that you'll probably be making many, many samples throughout your career um, and throughout your brand and to just learn from the mistakes that do happen. Finally, you can talk to your factory about what their expected due date is and when the products will be shipped out. And you can just wait until your final garments are ready to arrive. All right, guys, that's it. So you have gone through the full series um, up to this point. Um, you are ready for production. And the next section, we're just going to talk a little bit about um, art placements and doing graphics. But in a lot of cases, that probably won't apply to you. That's why I wanted to put it at the very end. Um, and then in section 10, we're going to be talking about how to find manufacturing and finding factories. But this so far has been the entire technical design process. And I hope that it has been so helpful for you. And of course, you can always ask me questions, um, leave me comments. I am super responsive and so happy to help or recommend things. So just let me know if you have any questions. And um, of course, please, as always, go check out the blog post. It has so much more detail in it. Um, it's a lot easier for me personally to write out all my thoughts and just to make sure I'm not missing anything. But I think it's important to have like this video um, compilation of the blog post in case you learn this way but definitely check it out it has um, the examples of how I write my comments and kind of like the formula I use so it's a great great resource um, to have I want to thank you guys so much for following along um, I know we do still have two more sections but this is essentially the meat of um, this series and it's been so much fun to create this this is the first time that I have um, made a video of me talking um, <laughs> for an entire series so I think it's worked out pretty well I've learned so much it's only gonna get better from here as I said earlier in my little spoiler there is going to be an additional series that kind of plays off of this I'm going to talk more about grading pattern making and determining fit and fit issues and that will be launching in early 2020 so you guys can look out for that and um yeah thank you again and please tune in to the last two sections I have a really amazing awesome surprise um to give you guys in section 10 so i'm super excited about that so definitely follow along with those last two all right guys thank you so much for watching um please like subscribe comment and share everything's linked below and i will see you guys next week for section nine